Most bass anglers have thrown a square bill at some point in time, but today we're going to talk about three different ways to fish it that is a little bit out of the ordinary. Hi there, welcome to the Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Hey, before the video gets going, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and punch that notification bell. Videos come out three times per week. And if you just love bass information and you can't get enough of it, make sure you check out our brand new blog site as well, thebassfishinglife.com. Thank you so very much. The square bill crankbait has been around since the mid 1970s and its popularity has kind of risen and fallen off the radar a few times. But in recent history, most anglers do have some of these in their tackle collection and they throw it on a regular basis. Now the traditional method for fishing a square bill, what I like to tell a lot of anglers is that any place that you could throw a spinner bait, you can throw a square bill. It is designed to bounce and deflect off of all kinds of different cover and it can rip through vegetation with ease. But most of the time, anglers are pitching it or casting it to very visible cover. There'll be a stump right there and they kind of pitch up to it or they're running it down along a lay down or underneath uh, the floats on a dock. And all of those are highly effective effective methods for fishing a square bill and I do that all the time as well. But square bill crankbaits, for some uncanny reason with this bill design and then the body shape, they do a great job of searching or hunting for fish even in open water and more traditional offshore situations. And that's what we are going to talk about today is using a square bill in non-traditional methods. Now, the first thing to take note when you're gonna use a square bill for more offshore stuff or open water fishing, the first thing that we have to do is probably change our line size. A lot of times if we're throwing these things up to very visible cover, we've got some pretty heavy stuff on. We might have braid on, maybe we've got 20 pound, 25 pound um, monofilament fluorocarbon, whatever. We've got some pretty heavy line. You can control the depth that your lure runs by changing that line size. And my go-to for offshore or open water square bill fishing is 10 pound fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon sinks, it allows me to get maximum depth and that's why it is my line of choice. As far as the other traditional equipment setups, when I'm fishing square bills in open water, I still have my crank and rod, okay? It's either a glass rod or a composite rod that is part graphite, part glass. A very parabolic action has a soft tip or a slow action to it up on that rod tip and it, it just is excellent for throwing crankbaits, okay? So that part of it doesn't change. I may go with a little bit longer rods, 7.4, maybe even up to a 7.6, because I want to get some ultra long casts. But the big difference between pitching and flipping and casting square bills to visible cover and then offshore fishing is definitely the line size. Now, in, in recent times, many manufacturers have come out with a variety of square bills to hit different depths. Right here in front of me, I do have the 1.5 and the 2.5. These are two extremely popular sizes. But now we also have a 4.0 and an 8.0. And as you can see, between the 1.5 and then the 8, that's a considerable difference in depth. So manufacturers have given us some more options than your traditional square bill lineup to hit some different depth zones. So I try to have all of these with me in the boat at the same time. But let me go ahead and go over the three situations where I will use a square bill that I call non-traditional. My first and by far and away my favorite is paralleling. Okay, so instead of, you know, facing the bank and pitching up there to a stump or a lay down at the bank, I like to parallel the bank 
and I make ultra long casts down the length of the bank and traditionally it's pretty open water. I don't really hit much of anything on the way back to the boat. Now, a lot of the lakes that I personally fish up here in the northern part of the United States do have a lot of heavy vegetation, so I may try to switch up my lure selection or I can just tick the tops of that vegetation, but it's not necessarily needed. Most of these baits I'm going to be running in that five foot to 10 foot range in that more open water as I am paralleling. And what I'm looking to do is to locate some fish. And this bait, the, the way it's designed has just got an excellent hunting action, an excellent searching action. And I can bring that thing through open water and get bit. I probably catch almost as many fish in open water with square bills as I do up in shallow cover. Now obviously that says I fish it this way a lot, but it's very, very effective. So that's my first choice for a square bill in a non-traditional manner is to get in that open water and parallel the bank and really hunt and search through that five foot to 10 foot zone. Now, as far as the retrieve goes, you've heard me say in these videos many, many times, whether it's soft plastics or when I'm fishing crankbaits, is we often overwork the lures and fish them too fast. And of course, there are exceptions, you know, burning a spinner bait. Well, this square bill in open water is one of those times where I may reel it pretty fast, almost burning it back to the boat, and I get lots of reaction strikes that way. Now, with that said, if I'm working it for a while and bringing it really quickly and I'm not getting bites, yeah, then I'm going to go ahead and slow it down. But this is one of those exceptions where this square bill, when you bring it back hard and fast through that water calm, it's really got in a very erratic searching type action. It, it can pull strikes that other lures do not. So make sure you try to reel it very quickly and then go ahead and have a few cast retrieves where you slow it down and see what the fish are looking for on that particular day. The second method that I use square bills for in open water is searching flats. When I was a younger angler and a very new tournament angler, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, big expansive flats scared me. I had no idea how to approach them. It was the these areas that may be two, 300 yards wide and 50, 60 yards deep and there'd be no contour changes whatsoever. It was this just this big vast area of sameness and it really intimidated me. But we know that bass like to get up on flats, especially in the spawning season. They will come up and spread out. And if the bait gets up in there, you know, maybe if it's a little clear water flat, the main, main channel, lake channel, river channel is muddy, but you got this big expansive flat that's holding clear water, those bass are gonna get up in there and we've got to find them. We've got to locate them. Well, a square bill can search through a flat efficiently and quickly and you don't always have to be banging it off something to go ahead and find those fish. So a square bill is my number one choice when I'm pretty sure the bass are up on flats. It is a great location tool for that situation. The third way that I use square bills in a non-traditional manner is when I'm fishing points. Bass anglers know that fish hang on points all year long, whether it's winter, spring, summer, fall, there's usually fish to be found on points. And very traditional hunting lures, locating lures to find bass on points would be your deep diving crankbaits, your Carolina rigs, those types of situations. Well, a real key to unlocking where bass are holding or hiding on a point is you've got to hit it at multiple 
angles. Most of the time you see a boat parked off the point and then throwing up onto the point and bringing that lure back and, and that does work. But to really find that load of fish, you've got to hit that point from multiple angles, whether it's out at the end, working down the sides. And I will even take the boat and put it right up on the shoreline and cast out to deep water and bring that lure back. And that's the beauty of a square bill is I can hit that point from multiple angles and this lure is still very effective. A deep diving crankbait does not do well when you're throwing to deep water and bringing it back to shallow water. If you're a bank fisherman, a shoreline fisherman, you very well know this. That big bill likes to dig deep and, and get hung up. But that's not a problem with a square bill. You can throw it out to that more open water, work it quick, burn it back, and it just has got this, this ability to call fish up. And then the shallower that point gets, the square bill is going to be right at home. It's not going to get hung up. It's going to bounce through those rocks, bounce through that cover just fine. So I use a square bill all the time when I'm trying to locate fish on the points. I may start with a deep diver, may start with a Carolina rig, but if I'm not finding them, I'll go ahead and put that rod down and start to work around that point with a square bill as well. I, I can't even tell you how many times back when I was doing television, uh, my partner Scott, and he also ran the camera all the time for us in the boat, he would take these square bills and just throw them in places that you think, man, there's no way. He's, he's throwing the opposite direction of where we should throw, and he would pull back some real big bass. I mean, the biggest bass of the day, and I'd be like, Dude, that fish wasn't supposed to be there. But they were caught on square bills. They are just excellent fish locators. So I hope that these three non-traditional methods for fishing a square bill maybe encourages you this year to try to throw those in places you normally wouldn't. And I'm not gonna lie, it does take some time when you're throwing one of these in open water and not banging into anything and not bouncing into anything. You're like, this isn't going to work, but it will work. It does work. I remember last year in 2019, the very first bass I caught in the 2019 season was actually on a 2.5 and I was bringing it back to the boat and the lure is coming through about 25, 30 foot of water and a large mouth just rocketed up out of nowhere, out of the depths and just annihilated that thing. That was my very first fish of the 2019 season, was on a square bill crankbait out in open water. So you've got to believe as you're casting them that that hunting action, that searching action is something that just drives bass crazy and really vary that retrieve. Just change speeds, start, stop, do all kinds of things with it until you figure out what exactly they want. Hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today because you just never know what a difference you might make in their life. For the bass fishing life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.